What's up, future physios? Welcome to episode three of the Physio School podcast. My name is Cash Mahdi, and I'm joined today by my wonderful co hosts, Anthony Pindo da Costa and Reed Vandervluten. Let's start off with Anthony. How's it going, buddy? How's life? It's going well, man. Life's good. No complaints. Went on my uh, pre podcast run this morning. So, you know, I think it's going to have to start becoming a part of the ritual because. You know, as you know, us Italians are pretty superstitious. So, if I don't go on a if I don't go on a run before the podcast anymore, you know, there's disaster is going to happen. So, it's part nice. of the ritual. And your voice is sounding real nice today. It weather is. was good. Yeah, Re- weather was good. Not too much of a cold breeze, so not not as hoarse today. Awesome. And Reed, how are you, buddy? I'm doing well today. Thank you. Um, yesterday, big Leafs win, and obviously being in. Being in Calgary, Alberta and being a Leafs fan, it's not the easiest time out here, especially when they started off the way that they did. So they've strung together a few W's. You know, Austin Matthews is back in the lineup. He's scoring again. Uh, Life is better. That's for sure. I was taking some flack early on. Nice, nice. No Leafs jersey, though. I see you're not repping. No. So I'm superstitious. And wow, kind of theme of the podcast, I guess, with that superstition. But (laughs) I actually haven't watched a Leaf game since they started winning again. And, you know, maybe that's the key. I just can't watch. I can't wear a Leafs jersey. Oh. Nothing. I can't, I have to be a secret fan. Sounds like you're a bandwagon jumper, but never mind that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We need well, another podcast for that. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe let's start with our podcast. Now, the purpose of this podcast is to interview you today, Reed. So in this episode, Anthony and I are going to interview the interview master, Reed Vandervluten, about his jersey, his journey, my bad, <laughs> talking about jerseys here, his journey on becoming a physiotherapist. So without further ado, let's kick off the interview. So Reed, I've actually never heard your story before. So why don't we just start off with you telling us why you chose to pursue physiotherapy as a career? For sure. There's a a number of reasons. So bear with me as this might be a little bit long winded. Um, But my pursuit of physiotherapy or my interest in it developed back in high school, similar to most. Um, There's two main reasons back then, because I was destined to go down the business pathway, follow my old man in his in his career. And it got to about grade 11, you know, that time when you sort of have to start taking courses to guide which direction you're going to go for your university degree. And I just on a flyer, like I loved sports, I took an exercise science or anatomy course, and I loved it. It felt like something, one, I was super interested in, two, I was good at, and three, I could see a career from eventually. eventually. But that wasn't necessarily physiotherapy right away for me. Um, What then kind of helped to concrete that was I was a volleyball player throughout high school, despite my hulking 5'8 frame. And playing in the backcourt, obviously, as the libero, um, took a lot of um, spikes like to my hands and would jam my fingers pretty often. And at that time... You know, it, it impacted my day to day more than I you know, really expected it to. I remember shampooing my hair in the shower and I'm like, man, this really hurts. And I started to think, well, if this is impacting me so much, a jammed finger, imagine what a more significant injury would do to an individual on their day to day. And I started to think, okay, it would be very cool to be involved in that rehab process with someone helping them get back to those things that are currently being in- interfered with right now. So that was where it kind of started. But as I alluded to, it wasn't like, wow, I have to be a physiotherapist. Back then I had in my head, man, let's go to med school. Let's do that sports medicine um, journey. You know, let's become a sports med physician, maybe work with teams or work in a local sports rehab setting. And, you know, that that was great until I got into my undergrad. And we can kind of talk about that a little bit more in depth as well. Um, But I, I started to think, well, hey, this is sort of the area where I'm going. And then I started to take courses directed towards that as well. Um, but then the other thing that I, I think eventually was what really made the difference in me pursuing physio was my own physiotherapy experience. I remember going a few times myself for various injuries and I was the classic, uh, patient that you walk in for your assessment and never come back again, but I'll give credit to the physiotherapist for just doing such a good job because he'd set me up with exercises and a plan and I'd execute and I'm like, this is awesome. Like this actually works. And it got me back to playing really quickly. So between all that, that, that was kind of where the passion sort of stemmed from. Um, and then we can get into the university phase a little, a little bit later if we need to as well. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get into all of that today. And by the way, I just want to say that Reed is a lot taller in person than he is in photos. If you ever see photos, he's always next to giants. So it always seems like he's much smaller than he is. When I first saw Reed, I'm like, damn, 
he's a lot taller than I thought because all I saw <laughs> was him with Anthony and all his buddies. All these guys in physio schools are hulking giants. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Poor judgment on my part for making friends with guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all your friends, giants. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, Reed, I know uh, you were mentioning you didn't follow directly in your uh, father's footprints, but I can tell you, Mr. Ken Vandervloot is definitely proud of you these days. I know that with certainty. Um, but I uh, wanted to ask you, so I know, uh, you know you had all these thoughts. There's a lot of different things that go into choosing a career, but I'm sure there were some PT-related experiences that you kind of took on to learn a little bit more about the field. Did you want to talk about some of those while we yeah. get into this? Yeah, 100%. And this kind of connects the dots with regards to being in university, my undergrad, and transitioning away from that sports med sort of interest and towards physiotherapy. Because at the, I believe it was the first summer in between my first and second year of undergrad is when I first started getting involved with a few different opportunities. And number one, I, I volunteered at Waterloo Sports Medicine which was a great clinic to gain a little bit of like shadowing hours as well as be involved in the rehab process. Meaning, you know, it was mainly modalities, taught a few exercises, chatted with the clients who were coming through, but the physiotherapists there were really great at allowing me to sit in on a like full hour assessments or follow them along throughout their entire day. And they would explain to me about what they were doing. And it, it really kind of hit home that I was like, I could really see myself doing this. So I did that for three full summers, actually, throughout my undergraduate degree. And it would be once to twice a week is where I got involved uh, with that. And it was awesome. There was a few other private clinics along the way that I volunteered in, but it was never to the same extent that I did with Waterloo Sports Medicine. So that was a huge one. And then I had a few other unique opportunities and PT related experiences as well. I believe in my fourth year of my undergraduate degree, um, my family took a vacation up to the, to Muskoka, to Huntsville, and it just so happened that there is an Ironman going on at that time. So I looked into it a little bit, and they were looking for volunteers in the medical tent. And of course, at that point, I was a fourth year undergraduate student. I didn't have any credentials next to my name whatsoever, but I figured let's just take a shot. And so I sent out an email. Sure enough, they're like, yeah, come, come on. Like you can volunteer in the medical tent. We'll have a role for you. We're unsure of what it is right now, but let's get you here. And then we can figure that out. So I became responsible on race day for um, interacting with the families of the athletes who would be checked into the medical tent. And I'd be able to let the families know, hey, you, you know, your athlete is in the tent or no, they're still going right now because obviously it's a long course. But throughout that experience, I interacted with physiotherapists, there was uh, sports med physicians, there was nurses, there was a ton of different healthcare professionals within that tent. And they all sort of told me a little bit about what their job was. And it was being involved in that high level sport environment that really clicked for me. I'm like, wow, if I could do this for a living, that would be really cool as well. And so that then transitioned to me. And we talked about this a little bit in the last podcast is being an athletic trainer for the varsity men's baseball team at Western university. And as Anthony talked about last week as well, you know, that was huge because you got that hands on on field experience where anytime an athlete suffered an injury, you're going to the physio clinic for all of their appointments with your athlete and for the, you know, university baseball season to be the six to eight weeks right after their actual season throughout the summer, you know, varsity baseball is in the fall for universities. It seemed like everyone was injured. So I had, unfortunately for the team, I had a lot of experience going to physio and having that experience as well. Um, so that was amazing. And then to kind of round things out, because a lot of my experiences were, were very focused within that sort of sports rehab setting, which to my fault, I didn't get a lot of diversity with my PT related experiences. I did a, a bit of volunteering in a retirement home in London doing a, uh, an exercise program as, as a volunteer there. But outside of that, it was very unidirectional, unidimensional, sorry is the word for it, uh, with regards to my PT related experiences. Very cool. And that sounds like an awesome experience with all the different sports related experience you got through Waterloo Sports Medicine, through the Ironman one, which I never heard. That seems mm -hmm. very creative way of getting yourself a volunteer opportunity and exploring the medical field, specifically sports medicine. And obviously we heard about your experience with Western's student athletic trainer program. And that seems like an awesome program for anybody who's interested in pursuing physiotherapy or athletic therapy. 
Awesome. So how did that then transition to you applying to physiotherapy school? So like the process of me applying to physiotherapy school? Yeah, the process of you applying. So what made you then pursue physiotherapy specifically? And then how did that process begin? What did you do? Because it seems like you gathered a lot of experience. And I'm assuming a lot of that was with the intention of applying to physiotherapy school, specifically the retirement home exercise program volunteer that you, uh, that experience that you had. So that I'm sure was specifically for physiotherapy school. So what was that process like? What did you do? And maybe take it away, explain what that was like for you. Definitely. So that process began, I would say about halfway through second year is when I like kind of started turning on the jets with regards to beefing up my application and making it noteworthy. So at that point in time, I 100% committed to physiotherapy because like I alluded to earlier, I was a bit on the fence applying to med school or doing physio. So it was after taking actually biochemistry that I was like, I can't do this. So I I 100% went for it. I think at that time, what I did is I just evaluated where my experiences were at that point in time and said, wow, I really only got the clinic, that Waterloo Sports Medicine volunteering opportunity right now. So that's when I started to reach out and gather those other experiences as well and made it all of mine to become that trainer for the varsity uh, baseball team or any team at that point in time in second year. Um, With regards to like preparing further for getting ready for applications, I'll be very honest and transparent. It wasn't until basically fourth year, a couple months before applications were due. And I was like, well, I should probably look at the requirements now. (laughs) And that's to my fault. I was just along the lines of let's just get as much experience as possible, keep my grades high, and then I'll apply. And that's when I started realizing just a few months before, man, I need, you know, letters of reference. I, I need to complete the Casper for some schools. I need to do a bunch of other things. So I actually scrambled pretty hard those few months leading up to applying And that's part of the reason why I started, I basically applied to as many schools as I possibly could because I was, I was stressed. I was nervous. I was a bit anxious. I was like, man, I kind of waited too long on this. Let's just try to give myself as much opportunity as possible. Okay. And you already had the prerequisites through your program? That was the one part. Yeah. That was the one part that I did look ahead to. I had all the prereqs. Um, I was actually strategic with some things as well. For example, I knew that my English grade wasn't going to be very good. And one of the schools I applied to required an English credit. So I actually looked ahead and made sure, okay, well, I can take the second semester of my fourth year degree and it won't count towards my GPA being submitted to physio schools, but it will count because I took the the course. Um, So yeah, I would say I was very strategic with regards to that. Smart lesson learned for all you physio students or prospective physio students out there. Now, you also applied to a lot of schools, you said. So what schools were was it that you applied to? Yeah, so I took the blanket approach. I applied to Western University. Um, I applied to Queen's University. I applied to McMaster. I applied to the University of Toronto. And then lastly, the University of Alberta. Um, so I, I did five total. Nice. Mm-hmm. A, lot of, a lot of schools there. A lot more than me. Yeah. So it- read- so with, so with all those schools, I know uh, a lot of those schools have interviews, right? So uh, speaking to the interview master itself, can you kind of tell us what those interview processes were like uh, for all those physio schools? Oh, absolutely. You know, you don't forget those experiences, to say the least. <laughs> um, I remember, so when I went through McMaster and the University of Alberta had MMIs, and that's where I started my interview process. And then the University of Toronto had the CAP or Com- Computer Administered Profile. So for McMaster and the University of Alberta, I had McMaster's first. And I remember, like, I'll take you through that day and then we can talk about my preparation for it because that might be valuable for listeners as well. Mm-hmm. But that, that day was full, of, was full of nerves. I remember I drove down to McMaster. My brother was going to school there at that time. And he joined me. We went out for coffee and, and just sort of caught up a little bit. And then I went to uh, the facility or the building where they held the interviews. And at that time, I still really didn't know what the multiple mini interview was really about. I knew it was going to be pretty stressful because you have five minute to 10 minute stations where you do interviews with random people and you just go back to back to back. So that, that scared the living daylights out of me. But I, of course, you still just show up and you go through the motions and you're like, this day is going to be what it is. So during that time, and I like this about the interview processes, they actually take all the applicants and the candidates and they put you into a common room together. And then they'll actually have upper year students who will interact with you just before you do the interview. 
and and they're i think they're there just to like calm you down a little bit they have like coffee and cookies and they're like talking about their experiences and they're talking about the leafs game and how bad they are and uh <laughs> <laughs> and so at mcmaster that was really cool because you know i like i said i applied to all these schools i didn't look into each one of them super specifically which you know what reflecting on it now i probably should have but that's how the day started. And once you were ready to go, then you just hopped right into the MMI. And the MMI is made up of, you know, it's different interview stations. It's different written stations. And I told myself for that McMaster one, I'm like, you know what? No matter what happens, just don't bomb the first one. Like, be confident in your first station. And sure enough, it was the worst one I did throughout my entire interview <laughs> process. I remember I didn't even answer the question. Like, I talked for two and a half minutes out of the possible five. And then the interviewer looks at me and, and she said, I remember clearly. So you didn't really answer my question at all. Can you go back and answer? <laughs> and I'm like, oh boy, this is going to be rough. Um, but lesson learned, you just get back on the horse. And then the rest went really smoothly throughout that. There's a lot of really interesting ways that they try to understand your thought processes when it comes to those interviews. Um, and we can get into specifics if we want to, but it was it's over before you know it. And I felt the same with the University of Alberta MMI. I think I went into that one. This was probably a month later after the McMaster one. I went into that one more relaxed. I knew what was going to be expected of me. Um, I knew that, hey, like this is kind of lower on my list in terms of priorities as well right now with regards to if I got into multiple. So when I took that MMI, I... I rocked it. Fortunately, you know, I, I finished up and I remember even interviewers were telling me, wow, you know, that was a great answer. That was a great station for you. Great work. And of course, you're not really hearing that from many interviewers. So I tried to like reflect back on that day and be like, what was different? Like, did I eat something different for breakfast? <laughs> but I actually think it's just the mindset going into these interviews that you have to be calm and you have to just take it step by step and enjoy it is the biggest thing. I think at that U of A one, I took the stress off of myself enough that I could actually like sit down with these individuals in front of me and have conversations and be myself. And I think that kind of really shone through and that's what they liked. So that was the MMI. And then the at U of T, the cap wasn't another crazy experience. I don't know what it was, but yeah, just a, just it's always crazy going through these interviews. So that one at the time, I actually went to the University of Toronto campus. And I remember I was writing on a day that was kind of like the 1B day, meaning like a lot of the students who were writing it would take it all on like this date, maybe like the 30th. And I took mine on the first instead because I had an overlapping interview with the U of A. So there's only about six to seven of us in this big room and it's all computerized. So you get your own monitor and you go through and, you know, you think you have lots of time with the cap, but it flies as well. So the biggest thing that I remember from that is I'm about halfway through my interview um, on, on the computer and it crashes. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh no. And these two who I'm talking to right now, they can you know attest to this and probably describe it better than most. I know nothing about computers or technology. So for me at the time, I'm, I'm internally and externally freaking out at this point. So I call over the the you know, uh, administrator of the exam. I'm like, what are we supposed to do? And they go and get this tech person to come in. And meanwhile, I'm sitting there. I'm like, well, I've wasted five minutes now of my interview. This is a bummer. So they come over to my computer and they're like, wow, it really just shut down. Hey, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know what the heck happened. And they're like, well, there's about a 50% chance of this helping you and getting everything back. But it's also 50% chance that, you know, this won't like, you know, you're not going to get anything back. And so they went and hit this button and sure enough, they're like, it pops up again. They're like, oh, thank goodness. That was really stressful. I'm like, stressful for you. This is stressful for me, my man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so And everything that, came back? Like all your answers were still there? All my answers came back and I nice. finished up okay. and was all good to go. But yeah, like lots of stress going through those interviews. Unneeded stress, I guess. Um, and then Western and Queens, there was no interview for my year at that time. So um, it was really just those three. But, you know, those few months felt like an eternity to go through. <laughs> nice. it, was a, it was a wild experience, man. I actually had a just an add on question to that. So yeah. do you find as you kept doing these interviews, right? Like I know you talked about that first experience, that first question, you know, it was, uh, didn't go as you expected, right? But then you said you got back on your horse and things started going a little bit better. Do you find that as you did these interviews, you felt more confident going into the next one? 
a, a little bit of yes and no, to be honest. I think just the level of comfort of answering questions and interviewing with people improved. But each time I remember thinking, well, I don't know what's behind that door. I don't know who's behind that door. And that made me nervous. And I never really overcame that, to be honest. But I like to think, and Anthony, I got this from you, actually, is like a little bit of nerves is good. You want a little bit or else something's off, right? So um, if only I'd known you before doing those interviews, I would have been like, I'm in the right place right now. So I, I guess a little bit of like, yes and no. But I, I think ultimately when I reflect, I didn't practice enough was the big thing going into those interviews and probably would have been a smoother transition with me starting out interviews or even answering questions if I would have practiced more and I would have put the actual time constraints on myself when I was practicing um, on my own. But I just I didn't do that enough. And it really showed, obviously, on that first interview station at McMaster. Nice. Now, just again, get an interview and you need a pretty high GPA. So what was your GPA going into physio school? So going into physio school, I had a 3.89 GPA. Wow. Nice. Yeah. I killed it. Nice. I killed it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fortunate enough, that was high enough to meet all the cutoffs. So I was able to get all those. Interviews. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So well how like many physio good. schools did you end up getting into? Because you applied to how many? You applied to five, was it you said? I applied to five. So I got into four and I was waitlisted at the last one. What? Yeah. Which one did you get into? Which one did you get waitlisted in? So I got into, well, easier just saying, I got waitlisted at the University of Toronto, and then I got into all the other ones. And oh, I accepted nice. my offer to Queens yeah. before I knew if I would nice. have been off that waitlist or not. Nice. Blame it on the tech difficulties. That was the reason. I <laughs> haven't done that yet, but I think that sounds like a good <laughs> plan. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so with uh, just another add-on, so with acceptances to all those schools, uh, I know this could be also kind of a, a long question as well, but... Uh, what made you choose Queens over all the other ones? This is opening a can of worms, um, but definitely <laughs> I like the question. So, you know, I was overwhelmed, to be honest, uh, when I got all those acceptances. I told myself leading up to that acceptance letter being sent out day, hey, if I get one, I'll be over the moon. I can pursue my passion and my dream of becoming a physio. And when I got all four back, you know, I was so happy and over the moon. And then like a day later or a few hours later, I was like, oh no, I got to make a decision here. So I, I think the easiest way to look at it is I just sort of went step by step. And I want to preface this by saying, you know, all the programs in Canada are fantastic. So for me choosing one over the other, it didn't mean that, you know, you're not going to get a great education at, the, at, a, at a different university. But I think there is just things about certain programs that wasn't going to fit with my learning style. And then also with, I mean, where I was kind of geographically at the time as well. So um, number one with the University of Alberta, I, I just wasn't comfortable leaving Ontario and being away from home, to be honest, at that point. So that one was a, a bit of an easier decision just because I, I wasn't comfortable with that. Then I started to go through the Ontario schools and it was McMaster, Western and Queens. And I know McMaster is very heavy into um, a style of learning called problem-based learning, PBL. And that was something that I thought was very unique. And I know from speaking to a lot of other individuals, they benefit from. But for me, I just didn't think that it was going to be the right fit for how I learn. And so I decided against McMaster for that reason, although it would have been very cool to room with my brother. Probably would have been messy, to be honest. <laughs> so probably <laughs> a good decision. Um, but no, I just I couldn't see myself at McMaster during that time. So that kind of brought things down to Western and Queens. So. I had done my undergrad at Western and I, I really loved it. And I felt at home there, you know, I'd lived there for four years. A lot of my best friends either made through undergrad or even from back home were at Western still. And I was going to go with Western and, and stay at Western for their physio program because I felt like the, the programs between Queens and Western were pretty equivalent. It was just the fear of the unknown of going to Queens that was really holding me back from committing to that. So I need to thank Andrea for this. You know, my, my current girlfriend, who was my girlfriend back then still, she pushed me to say, like, step outside your comfort zone, like, go for it. I, you know, she said, I don't think you're going to regret it. it you're going to meet new people. That's scary. Yes. But the programs are similar. Go explore a new city. And it was basically just because I had spent those four years there at Western and Andrea. And to be honest, deep down, I was like, this would be a cool opportunity. But Andrea pushing me towards that, it, it kind of 
cemented that decision or confirmed that decision for me. And I couldn't have been happier with the decision that I did make. You know, fortunately, I can look back and say, I think I made, or I know I made the right decision, to be honest. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. If you didn't go to Queens, wouldn't have met Anthony, wouldn't have met me. There would be no physioschool.ca. <laughs> everything happens for a reason. That's right. We need to get Andrea on these pods. She's the reason. Yeah. <laughs> She's the reason. <laughs> That'd be a great episode. Um, circling back to those uh, interviews that you that you talked about. So um, some of the people listening, they may or may not know, but on our website, we have uh, something called the PT Interview Booster, which is uh, one of our two courses that uh, we created, Read. I know you definitely spearhead that one. That one is is definitely your baby. And uh, with the material that you've created in that course, you've helped out a ton of people get into their schools and help them prepare for physio schools or physio school interviews. So I wanted to ask, do you find that all those experiences that you had with your interviews, uh, do you find that you use those um, to kind of create the material that you did with that course? 100%. Yeah, hands down. Um, I've already mentioned it a few different times on this podcast already that, you know, I made a bunch of mistakes going through that interview process. And I consider myself you know, relatively lucky to be able to still be successful getting into physio school after those interviews. So looking back, that was where I developed a lot of the material for the course, a lot of the lecture material, and a lot of just our sort of like interview preparation strategies comes from my own experience. And this comes from also talking with a bunch of other individuals, but having that unique experience of being able to say that I went through a bunch of different interviews really helped to create that content. And I think it's, I think it's valuable content. I think it'll help a ton with regards to preparation for others as well. And as we talked about that first day, like that, that's the whole mission of physioschool.ca is helping those get into physio school because, you know, you can prepare for interviews by crossing off what's your greatest strength what's your greatest weakness and being like yeah probably good to go it's like those those aren't as applicable anymore you know those are your questions you get when you first are interviewing for different jobs when you're 13 14 years old depending on when you start but it's a little bit different once you get to these physio interviews and and the experience has definitely helped create that course absolutely awesome. yeah 100 we talked yeah, about yeah there's definitely more himself <laughs> Reed van der Vooten. <laughs> yeah i was gonna say there's definitely more nuance to to those physio school interviews as opposed to you know your local grocery store interview and i i know you hit on all of that the course is uh very intricate and it definitely helped a lot of people prepare for it and i know you're gonna help lots of people in the future from here on out i hope so awesome. Now, you also, you said you mentioned that you got into Queen's University, and that's the one that you ended up choosing. What was your experience like at Queen's University for physiotherapy? Queen's was great. Um, you know, I don't have anything to compare it to because obviously I went to one physio school. Everyone does. No one goes to multiple, <laughs> I hope. Um, but no, it was really cool. I met amazing people, and I think that's what really differentiated the experience. Kingston is an amazing city. The faculty at Queen's is distinguished. I learned a ton. I liked the experiences at Queen's, and I think something that's a little bit unique is the placement opportunities are a little bit different than, say, like a University of Toronto, which is much more cemented within the city. Meanwhile, Queen's, you have a diverse range of opportunities to go to more rural areas. You go way up north. I went to Petawawa, Ontario for one of my placements. I stayed in Kingston. I went to Toronto. There's there's a ton of different opportunities geographically because they have a large catchment area. And along with that comes unique patient experiences as well that you can learn from. So I felt really confident leaving Queens, becoming a physiotherapist. I felt like I had seen a ton of diversity within my placements that I kind of said to myself, no matter what I come, what I come across in my professional career now, even in these first couple of years when I'm still going to be learning a ton, I feel at least confident to be able to help people to some extent. And I felt like Queens does a really good job with that. They're very multidimensional. Yeah. I don't know if you'd agree, Anthony. Or yeah, Cap. absolutely. I mean, we're all Queens grads. <laughs> absolutely, man. And I was actually going to ask when my last question for you here before you wrap up was, uh, now that you've been to both, Queens and Western, as people know, they're, they're, they're huge <laughs> rivals. Who are you picking, man? What's your pick? Are you a Gale man, or are you a, are you a Stang? Do I have to choose one? Because I'm going to get a lot of hate either way. 
I don't I'll, mean to I'll put say, you on the hot seat. <laughs> yeah, I'll say this. I loved my experiences in both for different reasons. I, I think if I look back, I think my time at Queens was so special because it got me to be a physiotherapist now. And I value that because, well, hey, I'm going to be a physiotherapist for years to come. Um, Western helped me get there, but I'll always look back on Queens as that finisher, you know, get me to the line to become a physiotherapist. I like that. I'm, I'm happy with your answer. <laughs> <laughs> should have said you're okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah should have said you're. <laughs> All right. So before we wrap up, just one last thing, why don't you just touch on your experience now as a physiotherapist, because you've gone through it, you went through physio school and now you're a physiotherapist. Why don't you share with everyone your experiences as a physiotherapist, because you have moved cities, you've worked in different places why don't you explain what a day in the life of Reed Vandervluten involves now? Cool. That's an awesome question. So as I, as I alluded to on the first podcast, um, I'm in Calgary, Alberta now, but I work in a smaller town just south of Calgary called Oak Tokes. Um, I work in a private practice facility right now, and I've been at the same facility since I graduated. So it got interrupted with COVID just like everyone else in the entire world did for that month and a half. But other than that, just been ticking along full time at that facility it's a unique spot um, for the reason that it is, you know, as I alluded to with the Queen's catchment area, it's a, it's, it's a rural spot, which I was familiar with from my placement opportunities. But we get referrals from Calgary, not just for MSK related injuries, but a little bit along the lines of like, you might get a neuro referral here or there or a cardio resp. So I remember in particular, I did some cardio resp rehab with a young guy who was discharged from the children's hospital with um, from a serious bout of pneumonia at some point. And they're like, you still need some chest physio just for maintenance and then also to improve their endurance and their, their cardiovascular capacity. So there is unique opportunities in that respect at the clinic that I'm at. And I really like that because it changes things up and it keeps things fresh. If I was just treating sprained ankles all day and, you know, more musculoskeletal injuries, I'd love it still, but the variety is awesome. And since I've graduated, I've, I've started the concussion program down at the clinic there, which I really enjoy working with as well. Um, but yeah, just a lot of different variety and being a physio has been awesome. It's, it's an amazing work-life balance and being out here so close to the mountains, I hike a ton. Um, I, I snow lots in the winter time. There's never a shortage of things to do out here being so close to the mountains. And I'm fortunate to be able to work a 35 to 40 hour week and not have to take work home with me or even work on weekends at this point. So I can truly take advantage of that. And I'm really thankful to be in a profession that does value that healthy work-life balance if you're at the right spot, of course. Nice. So Reed, living the life out there. Trying. Definitely. There's no beaches, though. We got to get one here in Alberta. <laughs> Anthony, any final questions you have for Reed before we wrap up the interview? Oh, I think that's good, man. Uh, Reed, I appreciate you just laying it all out there, man. I think it's going to help out a lot of people. So really appreciate that. Of course. I hope it does. All right. So Anthony, why don't you wrap up the podcast episode here? For sure. Yeah. So guys, really appreciate you listening in again. Hope that helped. Hope that uh, episode helped you guys out. Um, if you guys want to reach us, you know we're on pretty much every social media platform available: Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. All of the links to our social media platforms are in our uh, show notes, so definitely check us out there. Uh, but yeah, make sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a five star review. That will help us to continue to put out the best possible content. And we will see you guys at the next episode. <laughs>